Welcome to the EV Frontier. This is my 2000 Nissan Frontier with almost 200,000 miles on it. Runs really great and is in good cosmetic shape, but I was looking for something a little different. In this series of videos, I'll show you how I converted my trusty truck and made it an EV Frontier. The main components that I will use for this conversion are a Nissan Leaf, a Resolve EV controller, and adapters from Brat Industries. These parts have been used on other conversions you may have seen and look to me to be the easiest way to do this. To get a motor, inverter, and charger for this, my original plan was to get a wrecked leaf. With lots of leafs in my area, I found several in the $1,800 to $2,000 range, but decided to go the junkyard route so that I didn't need to deal with a leftover car in my yard. I started my online search at used parts sites like LKQ and my local junkyards. This is where having a truck is great as I could just pick up the parts from the wreckers without having to pay for truck freight to my home. The motor I needed for this project is a Nissan LEAF EM57 motor with inverter and PDU. In the car, these are integrated together as a stack and you should try to get all the three as a unit. The problem that I ran into is frequently the image on the website does not show the actual part so I had to go to the junkyard many times and reject items that were pulled with missing parts or cables. What I find is that you might order the motor with the inverter and PDU but you will just get the motor or the motor and inverter. You will also want to make sure that all the cables are still attached and not chopped in half as the connectors are almost impossible to find. After several months of searching, I was able to find the motor assembly and battery for under $2,000. The battery was priced low as the wrecker was unable to test the battery and was unsure if it was damaged. I took a chance on it when it was pulled from the car and so far it seems okay. I needed to rent a trailer to pick this up as while the battery will fit in the bed of my truck, the pallet the battery was attached to would not. If I were to do this again, I would probably buy a whole leaf as there are lots of miscellaneous parts that I could have used for this project. You also know that everything is working before you do the transplant. The next thing that I acquired was a drive shaft coupler and adapter plate from Brat Industries. I bought a slightly off spec coupler, so my cost for both was about 400 US. The price for both now is about 500 US. These guys are uh, located in Canada. I bought a cheap clutch plate from my local parts store and cut out the center hub so that it could be welded onto the drive coupler. I did find that it was very hard to find a machine shop that would do this for me. It took me a while but I found a guy that would do the work for $110. If you're in Oregon, I recommend Steve's Machining in Cornelius, Oregon. While I was waiting for the adapter plate and coupler, I ordered my EV controller from ResolveEV.com. This controller allows you to easily use the motor, battery, charger, and inverter from a 2013 or newer Nissan LEAF. This is probably the simplest way to use the Nissan LEAF parts downside being that you need to use all of the original Nissan components. The cost for the controller is 899 euros and at the time I made the video that works to about 945 US. The Resolve controller uses the original Nissan uh, Leaf wiring harness so you want to make sure that you get that with your motor. Isaac, the owner of Resolve EV, provides detailed instructions on how to wire up the controller and after a lot of tinkering and help from the online EV community, I was able to get the motor spinning on my test bed. So the total so far for the components is 3445 I searched Craigslist and Facebook for scrap metal for my adapter plate, wire, and other miscellaneous parts. I don't have a total for those but I'm sure it still keeps my price under my $4,000 budget. 
Now that I knew the motor worked, it's ready to bite the bullet and start working on the truck. First thing to do is load the battery into the bed of the truck. I'm eventually going to build a battery box either under the bed or near the cab of the bed. I'm doing it like this for now to keep the cost down. After pulling the engine, I did a quick test fit of the motor stack and saw that the PDU was going to interfere with the firewall. I decided to separate that from the assembly. I'm also keeping the AC compressor on the side as my plan is to use a scooter motor to power that for AC. Winter is coming up though, so I won't need that for now. With the engine out, it was time to roll the truck out into the driveway and give it a good pressure wash. After cleaning, it was time to make the transmission adapter plate, make the spacer between the motor and transmission, and mount the assembly back in the truck. Motor mounts are made of steel stiffened with an L bracket welded on the underside. This was mounted to the frame and will also support the PDU. With the motor mounted in place it was time to hook up the wiring and see if it will run. Again, eventually I'm going to rebuild the battery box, set up air conditioning and do some interior updates that will bring the cost up. But for now, the goal was just to get the Frontier up and running and driving. I 
will connect the battery. I will turn on the controller. It'll go into neutral. I will put it in drive. Stay tuned for my next video where I'll be working on cleaning up the engine bay, moving the wiring to the interior, and putting the final pieces together. We'll also have the first drive.